Hi, welcome to One Day to Love. This is my follow-up interview with Martha Byrne. Martha Byrne McMahon is married to Michael McMahon, and she has beautiful children and a wonderful family life. She was a very successful actress and played Billy Walsh Snyder on As the World Turns for many years. And I would like to say that she's one of the best actresses that ever was on daytime television. She went back to that show so many times. I went back a lot to my shows as well, but not as many times as she did for the period of time that she did. They just couldn't live without her. And I understand that. And I can see why her family feels that way. And they also can't live without Michael. So they need to save his reputation and get this conviction overturned. So I know she's been very busy going to DC, going on different shows to talk to different experts about this, and we're going to follow up with Martha. Welcome, Martha, to One Day to Love. I am not calling it One Date anymore. I'm calling it One Day to Love so that I can talk to people about all kinds of things besides dating, even though we do talk about that too. Um, I wanted to follow up with you because I'm, you know, your friend and I wanted to know yes. what was going on with, with Michael. And I saw that you were in DC and I'm thinking, I was. is she running for office? Is she going to be the congressman? That's one way to get him out of it. Yeah, I, I, I toyed with the idea. I, I, did. I toyed with I it all toyed. the time. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I do think that it's a, it's so fascinating to me how similar politics is to show business. Um, it's and way worse, honey. It is. Worse. Well, interestingly enough, <laughs> I will say that when I was down in DC and I, I kind of, I see the inner workings of the, of the system, you know, the, the machine and you see, you pass by hearing rooms and you're listening and you poke in and see what's going on and you hear the, you know, the talkbacks and the, and the show, that's the show, right? That's the theater, that's the stage. But behind the scenes, there's thousands and thousands of people who make it all tick. And there's even a subway that goes underneath the, the Congress to the Senate. And I walked probably five miles the first time that I was there in the buildings did not you just have your to, Apple Watch not, on and saw it, count your steps. <laughs> I didn't have to. I I knew by my feet you knew. were swollen. I couldn't. I was like, I have got to get a better pair of shoes for this the, the, these events. Um, but I found it to be so interesting, but not for me. I I was toying with the idea of running for Congress here in New Jersey, and I feel like it's a a game for someone else. It's it, I think I could do more on the other side with you know working with congress and the senate to help create change in legislation do what? and what do you what what would you do if you could yeah well first of all let's fill people in um your husband was a very well respected decorated yes. 75 medals such a high ranking police mm -hmm. officer who was hurt in the line of duty chasing a criminal and was mm -hmm. made into a, he couldn't really run anymore, jump over fences right. like we see on the TV all the time. Right. So I don't know if they really do that, but I figure they probably they do. do. No, I do. He did. Um, he did a lot. <laughs> and he became a private investigator. And didn't he work undercover? Did he work for the FBI? Well, he did a lot of what they call, they're called CGA investigators. So what would he was hired by, let's say an attorney who gets a case for someone who cannot afford an attorney, they will be given an attorney and then they would hire an investigator for a, a reduced rate to help the defendant who can't defend themselves. Basically, they can't afford it. So he did a lot of work with the federal government mm -hmm. in that capacity. But he also worked on the when he was on the NYPD, he worked in narcotics, drug, you know, running um, gun trade. He worked, had federal cases constantly where he had to testify in federal cases. Of, of, of So he, he he had a very um, a good relationship with federal agents when he was working for the NYPD and also when he was retired and became a PI. Not, not often did they cross paths, you know, once he became a private investigator, but he did work on cases that, for instance, he worked on a death penalty case where he was 
the actual defendant was on death row and he had to go speak with him one on one. And that is something that, you know, your your level of security obviously has to be very high. So we always found it, you know, as you'll fill in everybody that obviously when he got this, you know, he he became a PI in 2006. He started after his injury in 2001, retired in 2003 officially and then become a private investigator. And he first started with small cases and then he became kind of the one of the most sought after PIs in the tri-state area working on big, big, big cases. And, you know, when he got this random call from, not random, but like typical call for in September of 2016 to work on a, from a case Chinese where- client, From an American Chinese client, right? Right. So he got a call from a translation company in Queens, New York, which was a, you know, he looked it up. It was a real translation company. And she called and said her client was needed somebody who was a licensed private investigator to look for some assets, do some background checks, some surveillance, very typical work for my husband. Normal Did it a work. thousand times. Totally right. normal. Everything's public information, by the way, with private investigators. It's it's just that they have access to it in a way that most people don't because they just know where to find it, but it's public. So they have a way of, you know, anything that he shared with his client was public information and it was just compiled in one report. So he hired two NYPD retired detectives who were also PIs. He notified the local police every day of surveillance. There are reports. He did invoices. He did reports. He did his job. He He didn't do anything wrong. He got paid and life went on. Yeah. Right. right. And then, so and he, then these people come and bang on your door at six o'clock in the morning, scare you and your children yeah. to death and arrest your husband for something he didn't do. Correct. So he went to court and you saw how they manufactured evidence, how they manufactured yes. photos, how they manufactured yes. stories, how they yes. came up with things that were totally untrue. And yes. that there was no, and this happened to me as well. Yes. Uh, my husband at one point, and I wasn't allowed to speak. I wasn't allowed to straighten it out. I wasn't allowed to talk right. to the judge. I wasn't allowed to tell the truth. I wasn't allowed to say anything really. Right. Um, and I was very disillusioned. I mean, beyond disillusioned at the um, American justice system at that point. Now I have to say, this is the best there is. There's no place else mm. in the world that's better. There's no country where it's better. There's no country where it's easier or more fair or more just. Mm. It's just that this isn't good enough. It's just isn't good enough. No. And, and I, I think and that I, you have I to remember. To, I used to believe it was better than it than it is now. Maybe it was, but it's not now. I think it depends on, I I, I, mean, I know a lot of former U.S. attorneys and also former federal agents, active federal agents that are great at what they do. And like, I find it interesting when, when U.S. attorneys who, who are now retired, when they hear about the case or they read up on the case, they they said this would never happen under my time there, which breaks their heart. You know, they're, exactly. they're right. So like, if you know a person's innocent, you want to get them out of the case because it hurts your case. You don't try to compile something against the innocent person because the guilty people either have fled the country or, you know, you're, you're t- they call it low hanging fruit. Like the people right. who are left behind, who are innocent, who didn't have any knowledge of what was going on. Now, meanwhile, my husband, he was never asked to do anything illegal. He would never do anything illegal. So he knows the difference between what's legal and what's not. So, you know, they made a very big deal about him making a text to his client saying, what if we harassed him or something? I did that on another case. Now, what they didn't say at trial, which they kept playing that text message a thousand times, was that when Mike was arrested and he went and spoke freely to the FBI for almost two hours, he explained in detail what he meant by that text message. He said, and he told his clients that I did this on another case. So during his interrogation, he tells the FBI agent who's inter- interrogating him, he goes, I worked on another case, which was very similar, where a man had stolen lots of money from a construction company. So they wanted us to t- get closer and take pictures of what he was putting a new roof on. He had a new car, like that's what he was referring to. And he tells the agent that he goes, I'm, and I'm never going to do something illegal. He goes, I told the local police in that case too, that I was there. And they actually came by and said, Hey, what's up? And he's like, well, we're just doing some surveillance. Okay. You know, have a nice day. So, but but the FBI agent asked him, were they Chinese? And he said, no. And he never asked about it again. And we were not allowed to talk about that at court. We were not allowed to bring up that at court, that explanation. 
Um, that's what I think going back to me. that's what really yeah. bothered me is I had an explanation for what yep. had happened. I had proof of what had happened. They didn't care. Yeah, I think they they don't well they not that they don't want to hear it because then they have to listen to it. They don't want. It's to. like if you if you if you don't you know over four years of their investigation in this case, the FBI never spoke to the three retired NYPD detectives in this case. Two of them were former intelligence officers as well, so they were obviously very up, you know, highly ranking people. And there were two federal agents that my husband had spoken to about this case in 2016 and 17. And the FBI never spoke to any of them for their entire investigation, but they did speak to the criminals many, many times mm -hmm. over and over and over again, who either lied to them constantly, fled the country, changed their stories. So why the FBI is trusting people who are not, first of all, we, they're, trying to, the they're, trying to, they're trying to button something up that right. they probably should have buttoned up some other way. But this is gonna right. this is gonna feed them. This is gonna work for them. So they've got to make it work for them. And it doesn't have anything to do with uh, with you or your husband or anything else. No, it has to do with what no. they need to have happen. And that's when it's just awful. It's just you awful. know what I think too is really upsetting is that you know two of the U.S. attorneys who had worked on this case for four years were pulled off two two months before the trial. And they put two younger, newer U.S. attorneys in their place. And I find it to be a very upsetting as a, not just a woman, but as a businesswoman, as a career woman, that they're teaching these young women and that making something up is acceptable in a courtroom. I mean, in the opening statements, there are blatant lies that they know are lies. They have proof that it's a lie, but they say it anyway, and they say it over and over again. And I, I, I find that upsetting for them as, as for their careers, you know, that this is, you know, this is the path they've chosen, obviously, but I wish they had been mentored by people that actually understood what it means to be, to be just. Um, I also found it very upsetting that the rookie FBI agents who were watching this in the courtroom were witness to it. And I, I, I find that is the antithesis of what the justice system is supposed to be. And I also find that if the NYPD, if you did what they've done in this case, in the NYPD, you would be fired. You would lose your pension. You'd be the, the pariah of the police department if you created the evidence. I mean, you know, so much has come out because we fought back and, and in time has been our friend as far as what we found out. I mean, even so where recently, are you? Where are you now? What did you do in DC, and where? What what came out that you've been able to do with? What have you been able to do with things you found out? So in in the course of of this last, so he was found guilty last year. Uh, it's been a year now. So he was found not guilty on count one, which was the major count, which was conspiring to violate FARA, which is the Foreign Agents Registration Act. So he was found not guilty. They couldn't prove that he had worked and worked with the Chinese government in any single way. There was not one piece of evidence because there never would be that there was any connection to the Chinese government to his 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 job. But they found him guilty of violating FARA, which makes no sense. Nope. They also found him guilty of interstate stalking, but the man never saw him. He never filed a police report with the local police that he was followed. There's no evidence of him be being following this man. Um, he couldn't identify my husband in court. Nobody could. No one testified against my husband in the trial. Not one person. We testified talked about against this before. Him. He was he was a yes. PI and he was finding things out, but he didn't make exactly. himself known to anybody. So nobody was nervous no. about anything or scared about anything or even no, honest. no, no. And the and the and the the thing is, is that they charged him with something that happened eighteen months later at the address. Someone put a threatening note on the door eighteen months later, okay. and. That is that address has been public since 2015. He, the man was served a civil lawsuit on that property prior to the note getting on the door. So it was known by a law firm to serve him a civil lawsuit on his property. So how can you how can you say is my husband guilty of everything that happens on that lawn now for the next so long as he lives there? I mean, this is ridiculous. And they but see, this is what's really, really makes me angry is that. The, the prosecutors knew that the, the man that put the note on the door got the address 
from a gang member in California. They knew my husband had nothing to do with it, but yet they lied and told the jury that he did. And then they never arrested the drug dealer. I mean, the gang member that supplied the note and they never arrested the translator who called my husband. She was not charged. So they picked and they chose who they wanted to arrest to make it, uh, make, you know, put it together, you know, and there's a lot of unanswered questions, but there's a lot of answered questions since this happened. And I've found out a lot of information about these fox hunt operations, how they work, who was involved, you know, like how this all came to be. What does and fox hunt mean? So fox hunt is something, so the Chinese had put out these Interpol notices back in 2012, I think they started, and then 2014, which were, um, accusations against people who had fled the country of China, who had, were accused of embezzlement, bribes, things like that. And they put their picture up just like here, a wanted poster. And they called it Operation Skynet, which is the first one, which was a all about financial crimes of a person. And the subject and his wife were on that list that my husband was what following. I just want to understand. So they're, they're, yep. they're not just going after people that fled China and they don't want people fleeing China. They're accusing these people that have fled China of crimes. Correct. But Correct. we don't Financial know if they've crimes. actually done anything wrong or not. We we also know that they don't like anybody leaving, you know. Right, they, right. But there was a civil lawsuit against the, this couple that proved there was extensive amount of, of money laundering okay. that my husband actually found uh, mm -hmm. when he was doing his financial you know, his, his his checks on the on the on the assets of the homes and cars and things like that. There was proof or evidence of, of, of a, a money, he believed to be a money laundering pattern and, and LLCs and things like that. So when he, so, so when my husband was called, he didn't know anything about them being wanted. He had nothing about nothing about that. So he gets a call from his client in, in Queens. And then he looks up the person's name. He goes, I, Hey, they're on the wanted list. Did you know about that? And she goes, Oh yeah, whatever. Oh, I, I know what's going on here now or some random thing. He's like, well, he's being accused of stealing money. That sounds like what the client wants, but he's like, this is not a criminal investigation for my husband. It's a civil investigation, right? So sure enough, like five months, six months after my husband had provided the client with some uh, money transactions as of the homes, the person was sued civilly and the information ended up in the civil lawsuit against the couple that was my husband had found. And we couldn't talk about that at trial. We were not allowed to talk about the civil lawsuit at all. Nothing. We weren't allowed to ask about it. We weren't allowed to talk about it. It was extremely upsetting uh, because my husband always said it was a civil matter. I think he said civil matter 15 times in his interrogation that he was hired to find you know assets and things like that. The homes in that California. Him, the woman that hired him wanted him to find this couple that had stolen money from her. Right. So from, right. Well, she, her client was male. So okay. he, he, it was him. So my, when my husband met with the client in, in Panera Bread, he spoke perfect English. He said he worked for a construction company. It was a family business that had stolen money had been stolen by this gentleman. And he wanted to know what, where was he spending the money? Like you cannot, you know, if you've been accused of stealing money, like you want to know, it's very common to find out where are they spending money? Are they buying homes in California? Yeah. Are they buying homes in New Jersey? Yeah. How was he, how was he siphoning the money? You, you can't, if you're buying a $2.8 million house or a $3 million house and $9 million, whatever amount of money, right? Where's that money coming from if you're from another country? So right. in the civil lawsuit, there was a lot of, there was a lot of information about that, um, and he that did matched job what, and, he found, and he found out and he told him and you weren't allowed to talk about that. You weren't allowed to no. talk about that in court. No, no, not at all. Nothing, nothing about the accusations, the civil lawsuit. There was a, there was a partial judgment against him for $15 million uh, that we couldn't talk about. And, you know, which is truly unfair if yeah. you've been, you know, they didn't want him so when he said, what if I harass him? Like I did on another case, the, the client says, no, we don't do that. Ha ha ha. LOL. Now, if he's a part of a harassment campaign, you know, why would he be even saying that? Why would he be even having that conversation? A, and why would he bring it up? Um, so Fox Hunt was the, the, the next generation of Skynet where Chinese police officers were coming here to the United States. And they were knocking on doors. They were going to find people who had either spoken out against China or also were accused of crimes in China. 
And I have, there's, there's articles about our DOJ negotiating the return of criminals who are here with China because we don't have an extradition. So you have to negotiate the return. And many times there have been returns and why this person or that person wasn't returned is still gray because there has been a pattern of, of, of uh, people be going back and, and, you know, um, it's, it's not, you know, uncommon to happen. Either they go back by themselves, but like in our country here, people have been arrested for, let's say visa fraud or um, money laundering here in the United States. And they go, Oh, so they're also wanted in another country. So there's a lot of like back and forth, you know, again, we're, we're always negotiating with other countries. But that has so nothing part to of do what with we do. you or my nothing, or anything nothing, else. nothing, so, so nothing. What, what did you, what did you achieve since he's, are you guys waiting for his, his sentence? Is that, it was you... supposed to be, yeah, we're, it was supposed to be July 15th and now it's been moved to September 5th. Okay. And in um, the meantime, yeah. is there a possibility he could be exonerated? Uh, no, no. I think you have to appeal. You know, once you get the sentence, uh, you appeal right away, and then it goes into that process. You know, I, I, you know, it's, 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 it's very scary to think that someone could go. I mean, it happens, and this happens. You know, it's my husband has worked on so many cases where he knew defendants were innocent, and he went above and beyond his his call of duty to make sure they were proven innocent. He just, he's, it was really something that. That was so valuable to him when he was doing that as a career. But now on the other side of it, you see like, wow, not only can they put you in jail for doing absolutely nothing illegal, they will destroy your name publicly. I, you know, it's scary to think that the whole world thinks that he is uh, a traitor to the country. I know. And I, 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 I don't know if they understand or maybe they don't care the Department of Justice. But, you know, when you call somebody a traitor, you're calling their whole family traitors. And that puts a bullseye right on your back, right? That you are considered the worst possible people that live in this country. So I had to speak out publicly. I had to go to Congress. I had to make phone calls because I had to get the truth out there to, 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 to you know, my husband got phone calls, like very scary phone calls from people who were like really angry, who didn't even know him, you know? So I said, I can, we cannot sit back and just accept this as that's their version of what they think happened, which they know didn't, I have to speak out and tell the truth to what, get it out there. And have you gotten people that are in a position to help you to say they will? Yes. So I, I will say this, and this is the first time I'm really sharing this is that we have members of Congress who are writing letters Great. of support. So they are amazing. I have met with at least a dozen congressmen in DC They've taken an audience with me. Um, I am incredibly grateful for that. They've listened. They want to talk further when this is over about what we can do better. Uh, I, I'm grateful for that. I met with the head of the Chinese committee. Um, you know, the, the uh, it's a bipartisan group of people trying to get more uh, due diligence on how we help regarding China. I know a lot about that now. My husband knows a lot about that. You know, I've been speaking at uh, PI associations. I've been re reaching out to local law enforcement to trying to help them, educate them. Uh, we know it's interesting. You know, we know so much more now because we experienced it. So we want to help more people and we will be doing that in the future more. Um, help people but I will tell what? you that. Help people do what? Help people in, like, say, the law enforcement understand what to look out for. If someone from another country comes in or someone who is looking for X, Y, and Z, that's a red flag. You need to make a phone call. You need to make a notification. You need, need to ask more questions. You need to uh, see what they're looking for. Why are they asking for, let's say, the deed to a house? Why are they looking for a certain person? You see the like, why are they asking are going, questions? You see the people that are going into homes that are owned by other people and squatting there? Oh, yeah. Countries are just right. living there and they're living there. Right. And they have the right to live there. That's what blows my mind. They have and the right my husband, to stay. My, my husband said that even when he was on the NYPD, that would happen like years ago. He goes, that I would happen. I, I just can't. I believe. know. Being a homeowner for me, I, I was 32 about my first house. And yep. Lisa Peluso mm -hmm. had a house in New Jersey 
And we had gone down to Smithville, the cutest town in the world. I mean, it's it's just old fashioned and cute and has tons of little houses like that look like houses, little barns and things that are shops. Mm-hmm. It's got a, 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 it just was the cutest town in the whole world. So we'd be in this small little town. Then we'd go to Atlantic City and we'd have the best time in Atlantic City. And then we'd come back to this tiny little town. I said, I've got to have this. I've got to have this. Aww. So I did. I bought a place in Connecticut. And for me, I didn't want to get married till I had my own house and my own 401k and my own car and my own cat. And my own <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Because I'm so codependent. I knew as soon as I married somebody, I'd stop taking care of myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like, Let me get my, this career, my career would go down the drain but, you know. um so so the idea that after that dream and, and 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 getting that dream and then having people come in and take it from you mm. it's like but you paid your bills but you're paying you're you're paying for the lawn guy you're paying for the heating guy you're paying for the insurance on that what are they doing in your house and why are they allowed to be in your house they're breaking into your house and you're, you don't have any, I, I just, I just I can't so far. I know. And so far, I know, you know, I just, I know, I know it's really, it's a, it's a strange and scary time. I, I, I think. So you're saying he's, it, he's helping people understand what he needs, these law enforcement, what they need to look for with people that are in the country illegally um right or people that are in the country legally i don't know um well that's also that's part of it is that they use a lot of times that there's a lot of fraud there's a lot of visa fraud there's a lot of immigration fraud there's a lot of fraudulent documents there's there's a pattern that's used to obtain visas and these or there's organizations that are set up around our country they just walk in that, with them. yeah well now yeah for sure <laughs> it's shining for sure. the, they, the, i saw them they were all fighting age men yeah on TV, fighting age men from China and uh, Uganda and um, Iraq and Iran and places that hate us. And I'm like, yeah, that's making me nervous. Well, you know, the 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 reality is, is that and this is this is one thing that I think the Department of Justice will not own up to because, you know, we were welcoming Chinese police officers from the, and they were training here with our police departments. They were taking classes at, at universities on our invitation. Mm-hmm. These were on visa at my husband's trial. They showed visas that of these men that came in and a woman who came in legally under their own names and just put that they were Chinese government. They were here 2016, 17. We were allowing them to come here. And then at my husband's trial, they turned that into, well, they're criminals. And then they put their pictures up like a pyramid. Now, meanwhile, my husband had no idea who these people were. They had no idea who they were, but they, but they turned them into criminals in 2023 because they needed to, because but when they came here, they came here with our welcome arm, open arms. And How did they turn them into me- criminals? What did they, what do you because mean? Because in my husband's case, they go that th- these people were actually bad people, but, it, but, but the problem is, how can you call them bad people in 2023, but in 2016, you're welcoming them here where they're taking classes at our universities in Connecticut and Texas. We are celebrating their presence here and having meetings with them in DC. But then now what I found yesterday was that there was a, a, a press release from 2015 in June regarding a case where the DOJ thanked the Chinese police departments and the Chinese government for their help in bringing down the case. Now, this is 2015 of June. It is public, right? So when all of a sudden did it turn a few months later that the same people are now not on the watch of the government going, wait a minute, there maybe they're not here for all good reasons, right? That maybe they're up to something else. Why weren't they followed? Why weren't they trailed? Why weren't they documented? But now, where did when that this accusation man... come from? I mean, who said that and what would they? Well, doing? well, because what was happening was they were coming here and they were going out and doing the, their operations that were on the side. They were going out in our country and doing these visits, knocking on doors of people that they wanted to get back, but weren't telling the local police about it. They weren't doing but they were doing it 
while, and then they were warned not to do it again. They were told not, oh, don't do that here. But what, how can you four years later say, some, my husband sat at Panera Bread with a person that you led in this country, you knew who he was, you knew he was a Chinese police, my husband didn't. He thought he was a, a client who was, had, had money stolen from his, his he gave him his, uh, an alias with an ID with his, his name, like that was not his real name. But my point is, you, we've let, we let him here and he's been here many times. He had they been here many times. Them. They didn't vet them at all. They didn't vet them whatsoever. No, and they came in under their own names. Mm-hmm. No, they should have, what should have happened was as soon as any of these particular people were involved in any criminal activity in China, Bye. in the United States, well, don't let them come back in. Right. Stop them at, stop them at, at the airport. And now it's, it has happened to other people you know, some have been detained, and you know, but it's like a pick and choose kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But my point is that, the, you know, we did get a letter, an incredible letter from someone that was working in the administration under Obama and under Trump saying there, th- this, this is not something Mr. McMahon would have been aware of in any way, shape or form. We were not doing enough about it when I was in office, this person who wrote the letter. We, I, I was involved with these these things. And I'm telling you, Mr. McMahon, there was no way he would have known what these patterns were going on because we weren't even looking at it close enough. So I hope that the judge takes that letter into consideration and says, if I have a person of this, this level in government saying, no, 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 he, he didn't do anything wrong. He was, he was, there was no reason he would have had any Knowledge, knowledge of patterns. Have knowledge of it at all. No, no. And if he did, he would have been the first person to get that guy who was a victim, allegedly a victim, and said, Come with me, I'll help you, because that's what my husband does. But he didn't, there was no, there was no part of that. Nobody in that group of people was participating in any physical or any trial, intimidation. During the trial, did they did they act like everybody knew this about these people? Yes, that's what was so upsetting. But I, I kept thinking, why isn't the press looking at these visas, running to the press room and going, holy, we had so-and-so here and this, this year, this, this person came this year, this one came that year, this one, was, this one said they were coming to visit this one. It says it all on their visa applications. One of the police, Chinese police officers says he came here with 30 police officers on an invite to come here. So why isn't that the story? Why is it, why are we not looking at the mistakes or the missteps here? And instead of arresting innocent people go, you know what? That was a mistake. We probably should be looking at this closer and monitoring these people while they were here, then opening the door and saying, come on in. There's a lot of money. Oh yeah. Um, Oh yeah. And that's the main problem. There's a, there's a lot of money that people make from, from, Chinese companies from Chinese everything. Um, It's a lot of money that people make from pharmaceutical companies. uh, Oh, sure. From from companies that are really not in, they don't have the best interest of people's health or safety in mind in America, but some of our representatives and frequently they're not representatives. They're not people that we voted into office. There are right. people that have been appointed to committees that are called the consumer finance, you know, whatever. Right. And, and and we're here to help you, but they're not. They're no, not. no, there's a lot they're, of money. You know, there's a lot of, there's yeah, a lot of like, you know, lobbying. Businesses in, yeah. in business so that the people that are getting, and it's not kickbacks, it's really allowed. Yeah um to to make money no no it does but i feel like what i've learned and i'm people that i've met through this process i've met somebody who was in the medical field who was falsely investigated um for years and he fought back and and they they eventually dropped the case i know someone who is amazing who you should have on your show her name is amy nelson her husband was working at amazon and she fought they fought back and she's amazing. She's, she's a fighter like me and and a mom and a wife. And, you know, she, she was, 
very involved in the Democratic Party. She's she was involved. She had her own company where very powerful women in the Democratic Party would speak at her events and things like wow. that. And and she's she raised a lot of money for Obama, you know, and she's like, if this doesn't matter, you know, this is not about party. This is about yeah. right and wrong. Right. And I feel like what what I've noticed, which is really fascinating to me, is that when someone has a hatred for a particular party, they can't see past that hatred to recognize what the messenger is saying. They can't listen, they can't hear it because they're so drowned out by their own opinions and feelings about something or someone or a party. They're not hearing what I'm what I'm trying to say, which is this doesn't matter what party you are, it doesn't matter if you have money, it doesn't matter if you have, it doesn't matter. If if they want to get you, they will they have all the money and the power and the protection to get you. So our long term plan, you know, Amy and I are really want to work together more because we got this is not about politics as far as our, uh, we go, as far as our positions go. We're talking about the overreach of the government and the the creating of cases because if we don't fight back, if we don't hold people accountable for what they've done to us, they will continue to do it. And no one is safe. No one is safe. No. I it's it's really if you haven't lived it it's hard to 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 under, really understand what kind of tactics they use i mean what they've done did to our witnesses i i pray someday that they can feel comfortable enough to share their stories it's not my stories to share i am i am disgusted i am disgusted what they have did to people who are heroes who are have sacrificed their lives, their 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 safety for for strangers, and they the were treated like garbage. They come forward and they get and they get they get they get trash. They get ruined. They but get, we can't. We have to fix that. We we they need protection. They need full protection. Oh. And they will threaten. They will say, "We'll charge you. We'll do this. We'll do that." And they do it. They're doing it even to to the whistleblowers that we've seen who've come forward and bravely come forward and, and, and have and nothing to gain. That's the thing. Nothing if somebody comes forward. They're not, they're not coming forward for their own, for their own book deal no. or for their no, own. No, they're not. Account. They're coming forward knowing they're risking the safety and the peace yes. of their family. Yes. And saying, but I've got to do this because it's eaten me alive. I've got to say yes. something because this is bothering me so much morally. I've got to say something. So then they come yes. forward and they say something and then they're penalized in every way possible for saying yes. something. I know. I, I They have to protect them better. And I think that sadly in 2016, James Comey was the head of the FBI at that time and and they were unmasking people and they were you know spying on people illegally and they were getting they were out of control what they were doing to not just people in 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 the office you know they're talking about us you know Americans were they were spied on illegally and millions of us were spied on illegally and they got away with it and Back Lois Lerner then. is living her life happily somewhere on some island somewhere with no consequences whatsoever. So is Hillary, no offense. But there's a lot of people that did things that weren't right and they just, yeah. eh, it's okay. And, and it, it's it, not it, okay it, yes. for anyone. It's not okay for no. anybody on the right. No. It's not okay for anybody on the left. But the thing that's really bad that I really, there's somebody I watch a lot on television and they talk about, how Lady Liberty has on a blindfold and mm. she's and she's holding out scales and she can't see anything. And and the scales are the scales of justice. And mm -hmm. they're supposed to be, it's supposed to be blind. And and that's the way it's supposed to be. And the fact that it's gotten that the legal system has gotten politicized. Oh, it's all political. Is just I mean it's so awful so awful. It, it is and and i and i just i just, i don't care who it is that they're going after it shouldn't be going right. after anyone right right it's you like know? to win at all costs right you 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 i i i think my my i have i have a lot of disgust right i'm really i'm really disgusted by a lot i'm disgusted by members of the media who 
knew better and had information and would not speak publicly. How about and the ones that find publicly. out they were wrong and they never say a thing about it? It happens. I'm telling you, I've, it's, I've, I time. have, I, I have so many times where even at the trial and I was telling the, the woman that was representing the New York times, it was a very nice woman. I said, why are you not publishing writing about what happened in this case? Why are you? And they put a false headline. The New York times put a false headline about this case and somebody called them out on it on Twitter and they changed the headline. Right. And I'm like, well, that was, that was the right thing to do, but they put it back. I just looked at it again. They put it back to the original. It was, it was a false, completely false headline about my husband's case. I mean, they knew it was false and they put it out anyway. And I, I, I've met some incredible journalists. I mean, amazing people who are, are fearless and want to do the right thing. Catherine Herridge and Cheryl Atkinson and um, Isabel Vinson from the New York Post. I mean, these type, these women are brave and tell the truth. And it is, they, they, we need to support them. We need to support them because Catherine Herridge and Cheryl Atkinson testified in front of Congress about the spying and the, the punishment that they received for just tell, doing their job. And if those women don't stand up and fight for us, then we will never have a free press. We have no they chance. We have no Herridge chance go. of game. Didn't Catherine Herridge get let yes, go? Yes, they did. He did, and they raided her office and took, they were not supposed to do that. But thank you to SAG-AFTRA who testified and said, you can't do that. These, these are protected. These journalists are protected. They have a right to have their sources. They do not have to disclose their sources. And SAG-AFTRA was the one that got all of her materials back. Of course, it was oh. after they had already looked at them, I'm sure a thousand times and downloaded them possibly whatever, but you know, we th th these are the brave heroes that we will look back in time and go those were the ones who didn't take it and pushed back and did their jobs to make sure it. that the people that are doing the right thing don't get even more punished i hope not i mean i i really i i really i hope not i will i will i will tell you though that there's a very short list of those who are brave enough to just go through the fire and it's getting smaller and smaller. The world is very small in the, in the journalism space, as far as people who just tell the truth, just give the facts and don't put their opinions on it and just tell the truth, you know, even know how to and do they don't even really look know. when this is all over. I, I look forward to sharing more about that. My personal experience with it. Um, you know, I, I think people need to be held accountable, at least publicly, for for not doing their job, um, knowing something was false and printing it, not doing any follow up, not doing any fact checking, not asking us for a quote, just taking the talking points of the government and putting it through the worldwide press, which was false. Um, listen, they can have their version of the story, but you know you need to. That's why they had some, slander some laws. That's why they had libel laws. That's why there used to be antitrust laws. That's why there was right. so many different outlets, and that were owned by so many different people. And it's on both sides for allowing right. the you know five people to own all the media. Um, Correct. I mean, that's on everyone that's ever been in government that had an opportunity to uh, hold up antitrust laws and make things more fair. But this is what mm -hmm. happens when when you don't, you know, you right. have one guy, right. one comp company, these this group of companies, and they all own blah, 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 blah. And if this story gets out from, you know, that pushes this company, we make more money. And so right. we look better. We have a better relationship with that. So let's just tell that story and let's right. don't tell this story. And, and it's, and it's, it, it, that was my major in college. I wasn't an acting major. I was a television journalism mm -hmm. major. And it just, so you know, who, what, when, where, why, and how is all you were allowed right. to say. And you weren't allowed to say any adjective ever. No adjective. Right. right. No opinions, please. No. If you give an adjective, right. you're, you get an F, you know? Um, yes. 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 And, and now I can't see anything that doesn't have an adjective in front of it. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll just, for everything, even if it's yeah. like just a fact, they'll, they'll put some derogatory adjective in front of a noun just to, just to get somebody's craw, you know? 
Yeah. Um, and it really has to change. I hope to God it changes. You know, I'm they're trying. losing audience. They're losing a lot of audience. Yes. Um, yes. Because people are looking on the internet for more, for different information. Right. Um, and that is a sad, sad thing. They, it is. You know, it really is. But we really have to try to band together and stand up for truth and justice and Lady Liberty with the blindfold on. Well, and- I think Vive- Vivek says, Vivek says, Lady Liberty shouldn't be wearing an eye patch, right? Like, <laughs> but that's the, isn't that the truth? It it, it is really um, that is sad to mm-hmm. me. But you know, I I I pride myself on not only being um, an honest person, but ma- being married to somebody who put everyone's rights first about their what their rights are, uh, his integrity. You know, they couldn't find anything. And my husband has done in his entire career that he's done wrong. They went through our, they went through everything. I told Mm -hmm. you, they know, they know what my, my blood type is. They know what, you know, they know everything about us. And then some, I mean, they really dug really deep to try to find that, that we were some sort of criminals, which we were not and are not, and never will be, would be. But instead what they would do is they would present something at trial in the beginning and tell the jury that this was fact and then never bring witnesses to prove that accusation I had the at the same end thing of the happen. trial. My husband and I, exactly the same thing. And and when I went to our friends who were, you know, one was the governor of a state, one was another governor of a state, and we'd supported both of them. And I said, you know, you have to get involved. You have to help. Mm. This judge is saying we have to settle. And they want $1.7 million. And all my husband did was save these people's houses. I know there's a lot yep. of that took money to save people's houses, but we're not them. And we mm-hmm. really, we saved th- a thousand people's houses. He did, I didn't. And 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 these people don't want their house, so they don't want to pay the fifteen hundred dollars. It's all it was, and it it's was crazy. a contract that if they paid the fifteen hundred dollars and we save your house, you can't not take your house. So they made us pay for five houses. And my friends, who I had supported in government. Mm in governors said you don't have a chance right i know it's really a chance it's, because it's the government so has deeper pockets than any individual person has right. and if they've decided that you need to settle then you need to settle yeah and i, I know it's i printed not... the document i printed the document i printed the arch case the other day because it just ticks me off so bad And one of the one of the men from the FTC, while this was going on, said, I know your husband didn't do anything and I know he could save my sister's house. So um, I hate to ask, but could he could you could you could you save my sister's house? Mm -hmm. So he did. A lot of good that did. (laughs) <laughs> and so that's what right. we're and doing. Because he's a good person. And then he got cancer three years later. I mean, this is why I'm trying so hard to get a job. I wasn't supposed to have to work. Right. And they took like it. You said you had your house and you had your life and you had and, all the- And we, you know, had and other, we had grown really big and they just came in and took everything I had in the house. A lot of it was mine. It, it's really- We didn't do anything. You know, and, and we talked about this, like when the time this happened to your husband and you- you know, the internet and things like that, there wasn't, there wasn't a place, a first, a place for you to even tell your story, right. Where, where you could get people to pay attention. Um, but you would be discouraged not to tell your story, you know, don't, don't say anything, you know, just be quiet, you know, and I'm telling you right now, if anybody ever, this happens to anybody, you need to speak out immediately because they hope you are silent. They want you to be quiet. They will do everything they can to keep you quiet um but you're telling the truth and the truth is paramount in and it will always win in the end whether or not they destroy you emotionally and 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 financially you still know the truth and at the end of your life and you look back in the rear view mirror you can hold your head high my husband would never take a plea deal because he did nothing wrong and he would never lie to the judge. He's the only person in this case. And I mean, the only person in this case who told the truth, the only one, the only person, everybody else lied, made it up, figured it out, added some things, judged it a little bit. And he's been punished the most. 
Well, that's and that is a me. terrible. That's what, that's what bothers me. That, that's really that is a terrible, me. terrible, terrible message to send to Any. the world, mm -hmm. to anybody, but like to our kids. Absolutely. If we, you know, uh, hell no, we're not going to stand down on this. But we didn't. We're not going to stand down. We just said. no. I know. And what it, what you, it, you, how what could it, you not? What it says is, is that we never said, he never said he was guilty of anything. Right. Uh, it doesn't mean paying all this money doesn't mean that, that, you, that you're con no. that you're admitting it or anything, but no. they'll go away now. They'll go away. And that's, and, but here, here's your situation is, a, is the, why would you, if, if you didn't do that, it would continue on. And on, I'd and lose on, everything. I'd lose absolutely everything. Everything. They wouldn't be happy until you had nothing, nothing left, and then in debt some more, right? So you have to have Amy Nelson on because her whole case is about civil forfeiture. That that she is really pushing to, to change that law. For you know, she, when when this happened to her and her husband, she had four little girls, four little babies, and they froze her assets. So that she could not access her money, she was, and she he wasn't even arrested. He was only in, under investigation for a civil matter that he had he was totally innocent of, and she had to move out of her home. She, I mean, what they did to this family, what what it is, but not unexpected. It's, it's, but she's fighting back. So what's her long term, you know, message going to be? We there's things that we need to change. And going in D.C. at the legislative level, that's where you can create change. If, if, if one prosecutor, one FBI agent is actually gets charged with perjury, which they're guilty of, right? Sometimes they, they, they make it up. If, one, if they start holding them accountable, taking their pensions, you know, bringing them to D.C. to, you know, to have conversations, I think you'll start seeing them dial it back because then they understand there's some consequences for their actions. And it, unless that happens, well, how is it going to change? I, you know, it's very difficult. That's really important though, is that a lot of things that have been voted on have not passed. And these committees, right. like I was telling you about, have been, people have been appointed to carry out the agenda of either the right or the right. left, depending on who puts together these bureaucrats. And these bureaucrats right. are completely not elected by us. They are, right. they are not beholden to any constituents and they right. will push through a person's agenda, uh, you know, a, a president's agenda or a vice president's agenda or a governor, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Right. And, and, and it's not the Senate. And it's not the Congress, it's some bureaucrat, some, you know, basically a puppeteer type person that d does. What... And there's a lot of them. Yeah. And there's, a, there's a lot of them. That's the main but that really has to change because we, I are, agree. we are trying to elect people to do the will of the people. But when they right. vote against the Green New Deal and then they right. make, then they then they establish some fabulous sounding committee. And they, you know, make it so that we have to pay six dollars a, a, a gallon for gas, and we can't get anywhere without the right this car, or that car. I'm not saying we should be for it or against it, but they made no, no, no. I hear you. The Green New Deal didn't pass, so they found committees that would put those things in place to make the people pay for, right. for this, and they didn't want this. Um, no, and it's not it's not the will of the people, right? That right. that is going against the but when you see the machine, you know, when you actually witness the machine down there, you see how it works, right? And you see how, what I'm saying, why I said it was so similar to show business is that it is a, it is a communication platform. It is all about communication and it's all about getting in the rooms. It's all about having conversations and not stopping until you get some sort of movement. I mean, if, if you had told me four years ago that I'd be sitting in the middle of, you know, Congressman X's you know, gigantic office with 40 of his staff members and he's going, I'm going to help you. I think you're crazy, but I got there. I got That's there. Awesome. That's awesome. okay. So that if I can get there, everybody can get there. They, they work for us, right? We, but, but if we don't remind them of that and we don't, we don't find a way to get to reach them, which is there's a way to reach them. There's a way to get them to listen um, that we, we, we can make progress now it's not pie in the sky stuff here. I'm talking about 
very simple changes or implement implicate um, in, uh, implementing certain <laughs> laws that are already on that already exist. If we just enforce certain laws, we will have progressed even a little bit. If we start enforcing certain laws and certain illegalities that are happening constantly, um, yeah, I'm leave not there. It? Where did you leave it? Oh, there's it's it's I'm going down there again in, in a couple of weeks. I'll be going down there probably every two weeks to two to three weeks and taking more meetings and expanding my um, my relationships with with certain congressmen. Because what happens when you get a great congressman, which I can't wait to tell you about him at some point, who is a completely on your side, 100 percent honest, is a true worker for the people it is recognized down there. They'll take that person's call and have a meeting with me because so-and-so called. Oh, it's so-and-so? Oh, have her, have her, Have her come down. Have how her come exciting. down. Take 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know? So I said, if I lived down there, I would get an incredible amount done. I would be always busy. Um, I've got other things. I have to, this, this to me is, is such a big part of, of my mission in life now. Um, my son's going to be a police officer. He's in the police academy right now in New Jersey. You know, my 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 children are going into, into a world that has changed dramatically from when we were younger. If if I can do something to better their future, I will do it and 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 take my last breath doing it. Right. That's our job as parents to go. We're going to make this world a better place than what we got here as best we can. And I have to do that. I think what they've done to my husband is, is is an absolute travesty. It's not only a travesty for our family, but the communities that he helps. I mean, he's helped so many people. I mean, countless people, hundreds, thousands. You know, he's taken hundreds, if not thousands, of illegal guns off the street. He ran into burning buildings. He's delivered babies. He's he's taken on taken on gunfire more times than than any cop probably has. Um, very few police officers saw the kind of ac action that he did. And, you know, they are trying to break him and destroy him. And I'm not going to let that happen. I will never let that happen. I, I always say like, they came to my house and they violated the sanctity of my home. I have worked extremely hard as a wife and a mother to build a family in which and a home that is safe. And is, is, um, they destroyed that. They, the safety of my children was put in jeopardy because of these people. I will never forgive them for that. And they, they must, they must be held accountable for it. I'm sorry. And I don't know what that means yet. I don't know how, how, well, maybe listen, I'm a forgiving person, right? I'm a, I'm, I, I'm a raised Catholic. I, I love my Catholicism. I love being Catholic. I'm like, I'm all about it. You know, we're all about forgiving, but you have to stop punishing us so I can forgive you. That's right. And if you keep, if you keep punishing me and my children and my family, we're not done yet. That's if you, right. if, I, mean, I swear to you on my, on my life, if, if the, if the FBI agents who did this, who were told they, they have, they have supervisors, they have people that they came to us and set me and said, I didn't want to do this. I, I was amped up. You know, I was, I thought it was what something, but it wasn't. I was really, I thought this was going to be my big time, but I've now learned that this was the Wouldn't wrong that be thing nice? to do. That would be nice. Any, anything I, don't could see, happen. I don't see that happen very often, but I would like no, to but, a but little I, bit of I hope. Also, a little bit of hope. I have it. I have it because I know that they wake up every single morning and check to see what's happening because they they know in their heart that this was the wrong thing. And I was not quiet about it in court. I would say to them when they'd walk past me, why are you doing this? This is your ter what a terrible person you are that you're doing this to my family, you know, and liars. I mean, out and out liars. And, you know, somebody from the FBI was there the day of the, the verdict, you know, I don't know who he was. I, I, I don't know who he was. And they said guilty. And I heard him go, yes. And I was like, you mother, like, are you kidding me? This is, you think this is okay? You think that this is okay? that this is how we are supposed to function as a society. Just make it up, destroy people. So you get your little, your raise, you know, your perk, your plaque on your wall. Well, hell no, no, no. And I'm telling you, a lot of people have left 
government that were involved in this case. A lot of people have gone on to pr the private sector. And where are they? Where and why aren't they coming out and saying this this was wrong? And maybe they were, maybe they are behind the scenes. I don't know. But um well, you're very brave There's, and I'm on your side and I'll go you. there with you. I'm from Baltimore. Thank I was you. just back east. I'll take <laughs> the train you. down. You betcha. You I'll should. You should. Anytime you want. You should. Anytime you should. You I mean, you you should be there. You know, you should be there. We we have voice a voice that people will listen to. And I can't stress enough. This is not about red and blue. It's about right and wrong. I know. It's right and wrong. I know. So if we can and be that voice to be that listen you know just to people to listen and 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 hopefully open their mind a little bit i think they'd be they'd be a well, concerned that maybe why also that we have a voice you know maybe this I is why it's happening i don't know i'm but not God's, sure i was always got a, a plan that i never know yes i know so, just trust thank you thank trust you, thank you thank you you're amazing keep thank me, you keep me informed and i will go with you and i will fight with you and i will do anything i can to help you because i know we'll have fun down there because we <laughs> And now I know the. And now I know where everybody, where everybody's offices are now. So I know where I know I know whose office not to go to. And yeah. Office to go to. Yeah. Um, where K yeah, Street I mean, is. Listen. And yeah, I whatever. know a lot of the good restaurants there. Yes. We could at least yes, have a little yes. fun while we're while we're fighting. Absolutely. It, 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 like I said, it's a city in, inside of a city, right? It's this whole this fantasy land. It's kind of strange in a way. It's like a set, you know. It really has that feeling to it. This energy is high energy and. And things are going on and it's history, right? But when I would walk past some of the, these incredible buildings and I'd see all the, how hard we've worked in this country to have freedom and to have us treated this way after everything our, our forefathers worked for, everything watching, they fought I've for. I've been watching it like crazy on television. I'm, I watched the PBS special on Sam Adams and Samuel. Oh, Sam wow. Adams and John Adams and, and Jefferson and oh. Benjamin Franklin. They've got this the series and it's just been fabulous and i grew up in baltimore so i went to philadelphia yeah. many times and dc many times and francis got yep. key and that whole you know our whole it's thing. amazing it's amazing to it walk to but, I, but it, it's amazing to walk the streets but it's also it broke my heart it literally broke my heart to look up and think the, that what they must be thinking about what has been done to our family with especially at my husband who was you know on the front literally on the front lines to protect people this is how he's being treated and everybody else around him that was involved with this case who was u.s law enforcement was treated like like they were not they had no value and that's wrong yeah that's wrong. it sure is so we'll see what we can do about it honey thank you thank you y'all are lucky god bless you. so thank, thank you very you. much okay i love you keep me keep love me you too. <laughs> okay we will okay Hey, I appreciate your watching today. If you like what you see here, could you please like and subscribe? I know you get tired of hearing that. But if you do, then YouTube gives us a little extra boost. And I would love it if that would happen. I have a number of other shows that I would like to get on the air and I need to have this work. So if you could do that for me, I'd really appreciate it.